everyone Merry Christmas hopefully your day has went great or is going great I had a wonderful day um, this is a story time video some of you guys might have seen or heard the clip in a video of a story I told but there's something I want to add to that I'll show you the clip but let me explain first So the clip you are about to see is real. The clip you're about to see is real. <laughs> the names have not been changed to protect any innocence because I'm not innocent. Listen, uh, so now that story I told you guys, I wasn't even thinking. Um, for those of you that has not seen this clip, it's kind of a spoiler alert, but not so bad. Um, It'll make sense once you get to the end of the clip. Um, I wasn't even thinking at that time because I was so caught up in, in memories and, you know, looking back on things and, you know, remembering things I did with my father. And, uh, I actually have pictures. Now, in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some old antique tractors when we we're talking to a farmer. Okay, now this, this clip you see was filmed April, <laughs> I think Bruno just fell out of his chair. You all right? Oh, he's limping. Okay, so, but it was filmed April 22nd, 2022. Okay, so a year and a half or so ago, whatever. Um, but I wasn't even thinking at the time that when I went back to the place, like I said, at the end of this clip, it'll make sense. When I went back to that place, I actually took pictures of that old tractor where the house was. So I'm going to play the story, and at the end, I'll put the pictures. It'll make sense, trust me. Okay, so here's, here's the clip, and I totally forgot about these pictures, and... So, take a look at it, and I'll be back with you guys. Okay, so story time here. It's not a scary story. It's not really a funny story, but it's a very interesting story. That I have a memory of me and my father when I was 13 years old. I remember I was 13 because everyone remembers when they turned a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a teenager now, yeah. So, you know, my dad was a scrapper. That's how he raised us. He and my mom was, they called them maids then, not housekeepers. <laughs> yeah. Even though it was housekeeping, but they were maids. She was, she, that's what she was saying. My maid at the Holiday Inn. Worked there for years. A couple of my sisters worked there. My brother worked there. I never worked there. Well, I take it back. I did work for a carpet company. We laid carpet in there right after the fire. That's another interesting story for another story time, but when I was 16, that was my first job. <laughs> so, I kind of worked there, but not for them. So, um, but done a lot of scrapping on cars, hauled a lot of cars. Um, those aren't, speaking of cars, those aren't cars you're hearing, those are airboats, so. But, um, so, uh, We'd just be scrapping, and that's when you had dumps. You would just go. There wasn't a paid landfill. I mean, people, you just drive down the road, gravel road, and down over an embankment or whatever, there'd be a dump or whatever, just where the locals would take their garbage and dump it. And we'd go get pop cans and beer cans and beer bottles and whatever. And always driving around, we'd, you know, see some old cars. Dad would stop, bang on the door. You know, we want to get rid of them cars. Sure, and we'd scrap them. Keep the good stuff off of them and take them to the crusher and then we'd sell you know the engines transmissions whatever i could get running <laughs> well, it was good <laughs> um but that's how that worked so we was out just running the back roads one day just kind of cruising around you know it was on a friday afternoon and he, and he called me mart <laughs> it's like hey mart i want to swing past an old house up here 
there's a couple cars and a couple old tractors sitting there i want to i want to go check on nobody's ever home but there was like fields around it you know hay fields so uh sure enough we and passed there and uh these tractors were old they were like in the 20s <clears throat> and there was an old an old volkswagen bug an old nash metropolitan one of those little tiny cars and there was a station wagon of some sort i can't remember but it was from 50s or 60s and um but uh i think it was an old rambler anyway these cars were no good i mean they they there wasn't nothing savable on them they just went straight to scrapyard pretty much but so we swing past and pulled down this old muddy ass driveway you know and it opened up to the old there was an old barn there weeds growing up around it an old uh big old two-story farmhouse over on the left and sure enough there was a guy um sitting there at his truck and he had his tractor there and stuff so he had been cutting hay that day old man i remember his name to this day frank he was 80 years old remember that that was his family farm okay and dad said uh you know I, i've been by here before i've seen them old cars and them tractors sitting out there he said you know would you be interested in getting them hauled out of here he was like well yeah he said that they ain't no count, <laughs> but you're welcome to have them if you want to haul them out of here. Dad said, well, you know, I'm, I just scrap it. They'll just go to scrapyard, you know. I, I believe I still got the titles for them things. Dad's like, well, I don't need the titles, you know. I'm just, like I said, they're going to scrapyard. And he's like, I'll bet, I'll bet you we can find them titles. Dad's like, well, okay, fine. But he says, you know them old tractors there? He said, I'd really like to hang on to them. They've been in my family as long as I can remember. <laughs> Uh, shoot so um we got talking about him he said that he said the old international it was an old farm all old steel both of them had one was a farm all one was a john deere i think the john deere was an a i can't remember what the farm all was it was old i maybe even before 20s but he says uh How'd he say that? My pappy, the day he died, was out working the farm, and he drove that tractor in there. That's where he parked it, and he up and died on us that night. <laughs> so, so, he says, and that's where it sat, and that's where it sat ever since. He said, right, if you don't mind, I just like to kind of hang on to them. So they're like an old friend to me. That's like, yeah, sure, no problem. But yeah, he says, yeah, the, Last time that ran, he said it was about 40 years ago. <laughs> it drove up there and no one started it ever since. Dad was like, wow, you know, it's a long time. And he says, you know, come think of it. He says, uh, he says, I haven't been in that house in over 40 years. And he says, no one I know has been in this house over 40 years. But he said, I'll bet them titles them cars in that house. Dad was like, wow, that's kind of cool. He says, that's why I come out here to get away from him. <laughs> I know it was an accident. He's in his trunk and set the alarm off. But, uh, so, <clears throat> I was like, well, yeah, we, we can do that. And he says, well, let me go out here at the barn for, for a minute out here yonder, and I'll be back. I was like, okay. And we hear him shuffling around in the old barn. And pretty soon he's like, come on over here a minute. I'm going to show you something. <laughs> all right so we go over there to this barn you can tell it ain't been i mean when he when he yanked that barn door open just enough for us to get in it was pushing dirt and weeds and and uh we walked in there and there was a 1929 i think it was an old ford pretty sure Hard to remember, like I said, I was 13, I'm 53 now, so do the math. But it was a 1929, I do remember that. And uh, we walked in there, and that thing, other than an inch of dust on it, was pretty much mint. Of course, the tires were all rotted off of it. And, but the interior was still good. It was cracking because of the leather interior and stuff. 
And uh, he said, just want to show you this belonged to my pappy as well. <laughs> course it's not for sale boys <laughs> just want to share that with you that was like well thank you you know because it's getting interesting he said now what i come in here for that was like i don't know he's he just told us to wait over there he goes there it is over there on that wall so he goes rummaging over along there was other stuff in there farm implements and stuff manure spreaders and stuff been in there for 30 years you know mm -hmm. and over along the wall was an old sickle You know what a sickle is, right? Tricycles? No, not a tricycle. Not that kind of sickle. Oh. It's a cutting implement. Shaped like a C. Oh, okay. You know, like the Russian yeah. symbol? Yeah. He says, now let's go over to the house. He says, let's go over to the house. That's what he said. Let's go over to the house. So we go make our way over to the house. Of course, he's walking old, and, you know, and telling us stories on the way to the house, which was only about 50 yards, but... <laughs> took forever to get there but that it was it was cool and uh we go over the back door and this i mean this house is just like like you see the like some of the urban exploring i've done and and others on here on youtube i mean that's just what it looked like it was never boarded up but it was locked up and he says you know we haven't been in this house since pap died <laughs> over 40 years ago <laughs> And he still had the key to the place. He pulls the key out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. But he had it on a key ring with a whole bunch of other keys. You know how old guys are. Right. It was an old skeleton key. Original key to the house. The house was built in the late 1800s, but it had always been in the family. So we get to chopping down these weeds to get to the door and we get to the back door and uh uh he comes up with that key and he hands it to my dad and he said that should be the key there that'll work so dad tries it and sure enough that door unlocked now it was kind of a little hard to open because you know it hadn't been open in 40 years right there's cobwebs on it dad wouldn't you know he moves cobwebs so we open up the door and he says now I'm gonna tell you boys something. There might be some stuff you might be interested in here. <laughs> like he said, nobody been in there for 40 years. <laughs> and we walked in and he said, yep, other than some cobwebs and dust, just the way I remember it. And uh, he, um, maybe it was 60 years. Anyway, I know he kept saying 40 years, but, uh, everything was just like other than the cobwebs and dust it looked like somebody just walked out of there and shut the door which kind of that's what they did hmm. uh, the farm passed on to on to his dad and then his dad passed it on to him and they just never went in there wasn't any reason to right. and he says I remember Pat having titles in them cars if something ever happened to me, he says, this is where the important stuff is. And he walks over to an old kitchen drawer and pulled it out. There's the titles in them cars. All three of them. Hmm. Right there. He said, no, I can't sign them over to you, boys. <laughs> they were my paps. <laughs> but at least now you have some proof. <laughs> That's like, all right. So we got to looking around, and, and I'm telling you, they're... There was stuff in there from the 1800s, early 1900s, and just in mint, perfect mint condition. It was amazing, you know? And we was looking at him, he's like, if you boys are interested in any of this, I'll, I'll, I'll come off of some of it for you. And, you know, after about two hours of going through the house, I mean, it was amazing. Still had canned jars of food, you know, when they did the old canning, mm -hmm. the old mason jars. And I'll bet you could still hate it, <laughs> but yeah, I'm serious. Uh, and the, the the refrigerator wasn't actually um, kind of a refrigerator. It was what they called an ice box. Uh -huh. Okay, you didn't plug it in. It was just a big cooler. Up on top, there was a square place, and you would put dry ice in there and close it. Yeah. And that dry ice, the cold air would come down and keep your food cold. Of course, there wasn't nothing 
nothing in that but i mean everything was still there and 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 he says you know he says i gotta step outside boys this is kind of emotional for me and dad's like yeah okay he says you take your time you look around all you want and uh, so he went outside, and Dad looked at me and shook his head and said, Mark, we can't buy any of this stuff. He said, this is unbelievable. He said, it's like a museum, you know. He said, we can't take this stuff and make money on it, which we could have. He says, you know, this is that man, all, this is his remem remembrance, you know. Right. And it was just, when we went back outside, you know, Dad told him, he, he told him, you know, look, we can't do it, you know. And he says, you know, I, I understand, I understand, you know. And, and Dad told him, you know, just for you sharing the stories and, you know, the, the, uh, and letting us take a tour of this beautiful old house, he said, um, you, you know, that, that's just more than anyone could ever ask for. He says, we, we can't buy any of your things, you know. Dad told me, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there worth a lot of money, but he says, I, I can't do it. I'm not the one. And that guy just, he had tears in his eyes, and he said, you know, I, I thank you, boys. I really thank you. And uh, but and then he went on to tell us some more stories. Like he told us about Christmases and Thanksgivings and the birthday parties and the weddings they've had there. And, mm. you know, the, the good times. You could just see a twinkle in his eye coming back, you know. Because when we first met him, like I said, he was really polite and everything, but it's just you could see the age and the tiredness on his face. But after we got out of that house and he started talking about some more stories, you could just see his face light up, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, that was when I was 13, and I remember when I was in my early 20s, I, I drove out there. I remembered how to get there because we'd been past a lot. I remembered how we get how to get there, and I went out there, and the house had been burnt down. Oh no! Yeah, the house oh. had been burnt down. Uh, they think it was struck by lightning, but it had been burnt down for several years before I seen it burned down. Oh. You could tell. And I, I had stopped and talked to one of the neighbors about it, and they said, "Yeah, um, there was a big that a big lightning storm. We have a lot of them in Ohio, and uh, there was a big lightning storm, and." That's what they figured, because the neighbors, they lived about a half a mile away, but they heard this big, loud crack. Oh, yeah. And like 10, 15 minutes later, they could see the smoke, and they thought maybe it was the barn, but it turned out it was the house. Oh, All that stuff was in it. and <laughs> What a shame. But true story, guys, and yes, also some memories of my, my father, you know, Rusty Soul. And so I like to, you know, reflect back on things like that sometimes, and... Uh, you know, it brings joy to me having the memories with my father, you know. Yeah. Just going out, riding around in the old wrecker, you know. Yeah. And they, it wasn't store-bought. He made his own wrecker, built his own booms, put his own winches on, and hook onto a car, raise it up, and go. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, some of the stories I can tell you. That's why I like having story time. I like to you know, get more of a, on a personal level with you guys because you know you guys like i was like we was talking earlier you know like uh like like i'll say we did this or we did that or like that over there is where we were at earlier because i feel like you guys are with me i know it's just a camera but you know and so i i, I like sharing sharing memories like that because i i have nothing but good memories with my folks and my family so yep every one of them good so...
So yeah, I mean that just totally slipped my mind because when I told that story, you know, it just like I said, memories come back and it's just you know, it's like I'm not filming now, you know, it's like I, I'm just like you guys are there, you know, Monkey was there and I'm I'm telling the story and it just like I said totally slipped my mind that, that I actually had them photos. So that's pretty cool, huh? I I've I've got them I've got them pictures when when I went back uh like I said when I went back to that house I actually took some still images um that was right 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 before I started YouTube but yeah so that's pretty cool but those those pictures is exactly where the old the old man said his pappy parked that tractor, you know, that 40 years before that. And that tractor was still in, the, still in the same spot when I went back there. Like I said, the house had burnt down. But that tractor, as you can see, there used to be an old tarp on it. and um, But it's still sitting in that spot where that old man got off of it, got his day's work in, and went in the house and passed away. So hopefully that was enjoyable for you guys. Um, I appreciate you watching, and um, thanks for listening to my story. All right, guys, so Merry Christmas. New Year's coming up. We got some stuff planned, and hopefully you guys do too. And um, hopefully everyone has a prosperous New Year. So, All right, guys, again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. And check his paw. Um, it's the same paw he was limping on. I had mentioned in a earlier video, a few days ago or whatever, about a week ago maybe, he was limping and then it just got better and then now he's limping again. That might be why he, he fell out of the It's my computer chair. He likes to lay in it and he sounded like he fell out of it, but um, Monkey said he was limping a little bit earlier, so it doesn't get better. We'll have to take him to the vet and see if they can figure out what's wrong with it. Um, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. Merry Christmas. Take care of yourselves.